Alright guys, Dominic here for Kiku, and today we are back with another game benchmark. Today we are looking at Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So obviously this game did launch a few months ago now, but it has recently received its 2.0 update. And as part of that update, it has actually now got support for the Vulcan API, when at launch gamers were forced to use DX11 on PC. So, I spent the last few days benchmarking a variety of graphics cards from both AMD and NVIDIA to try and find out what sort of performance difference we can actually get by switching the API. And the findings probably aren't as straightforward as you might imagine. Just to dive into our test setup and to give you a bit of background, Ghost Recon Breakpoint runs on the Anvil Next 2.0 engine and is actually a game we've been using in our own GPU reviews for the last few months. For our image quality settings today, we opted to use the very high preset as honestly, I think this does strike a good balance between visual fidelity and also performance as I did do some testing with Ultra, but in my opinion, that is just simply too demanding. I also made sure that temporal injection was turned off for these tests to ensure a level playing field and just to make sure that we are gaming at native resolution. For our benchmarking today, we did use the game's built-in benchmark purely for the sake of consistency across all of our testing and to minimize any variation between GPU runs. I don't use the benchmark's own performance metrics, however, instead we use OCAT to record both average frame rates and also the 1% lows. We ran the benchmark three times per GPU at 1080p, 1440p and 4K, doing that for DX11 and then Vulkan, so we can really just isolate the difference made by only changing the API. Our testing was also done using our regular GPU test rig, so that consists of an overclocked i7-8700K at 5GHz, as well as 16GB of DDR4-3200 MHz memory. However, you can find full details on our setup as well as all of the benchmarks over on kitguru.net. Lastly, we did also use the latest drivers at the time of filming. So for NVIDIA, that was the 445.75 driver, while for AMD, we used their Adrenaline 20.3.1 public driver. So that is really it, and we're now gonna dive into the performance. Starting at 1080p, we have put all the GPUs in one graph, and obviously there's two entries per GPU, one for DX11 and one for Vulkan. The easiest thing I think is to go through and kind of look at each GPU one at a time, so we can really isolate the difference made by changing that API. Starting at the top then, there's no doubt that the RTX 2080 Ti benefits hugely from using Vulkan instead of DX11, at 1080p. Here we saw its average frame rate increase by 24% just by changing the API to Vulkan, while its 1% lows also came up by 28%, so really significant improvements. It's much the same for the RTX 2070 Super as well, with a 20% increase in average frame rates with Vulkan, and also 27% increase to its 1% lows. So clearly again, these Turing cards do see a significant switch by using Vulkan instead of DX11 at 1080p. As for AMD's flagship Navi GPU, with the RX 5700 XT, there is still a definite improvement by switching the API, but it's certainly not as large as those two Nvidia cards, with Vulkan improving average frame rates by just under 10%, though the 1% lows did improve by 24%, which is again, very significant. AMD's Radeon 7, on the other hand, which was actually launched about a year ago now, sees the single biggest improvement by making the switch to Vulkan, as its average frame rates improved by a whopping 35%. As you can see from the card's relative performance using DX11, it really was being held back significantly by that API, and with Vulkan, we are getting very, very significant performance uplift here. So far, things are looking really good for using Vulkan instead of DX11, but as we head down the stack, however, things do start to change and we see some very interesting results. If we look at Nvidia's Pascal GTX 1060, for instance, that GPU saw effectively unchanged frame rates when making the switch. Vulkan did come in faster on paper with very marginal higher frame rates, 
but the difference is absolutely trivial and there's no way you'd be able to tell the difference in the real world. AMD's more budget oriented GPU, the RX 5500 XT, actually flips things on its head as at 1080p, this four gigabyte GPU actually performs slightly worse with Vulkan in terms of its average frame rates. It wasn't by much and the 1% lows were also better with the Vulkan API, but this is certainly a curiosity. Let's now look at the 1440p results to see if any trends become clearer. At this higher resolution now, the higher end GPU still exhibits some significant changes to frame rate, with average figures improving by 18% for Nvidia's RTX 2080 Ti. We can also see AMD's Radeon 7 also improving massively when using the Vulkan API, as it's still 21% faster with this API instead of DX11. Aside from those two GPUs though, there is a definite leveling out in terms of the performance differences between APIs at 1440p. The RX 5700 XT demonstrates this perfectly, as while its 1% lows are improved with Vulkan, there's just no difference to the average frame rates. As for RTX 2070 Super, this GPU is now 11% faster with Vulkan instead of DX11, when that figure was 20% at 1080p. So, for now, it does seem that upping the resolution makes less of a difference. This becomes even more prevalent when we look at the lower end GPUs, where the RX 580, the Polaris based GPU, also sees no real improvement to using Vulkan over DX11. Nvidia's GTX 1060 again is actually marginally worse when using the Vulkan API. It is, however, that RX 5500 XT result which really makes one point clear. Something that I had suspected but is now in plain sight, and that being Vulkan definitely works best when there is a large amount of VRAM to work with. Performance with this 4GB GPU absolutely tanked at 1440p when switching to Vulkan, and while this card certainly isn't a 1440p gaming GPU to begin with, it was also slower with Vulkan at 1080p. So to round things out, we are now going to look at the 4K performance figures. The data on show here really does reinforce that point about the video memory, as only the RTX 2080 Ti and Radeon 7 see performance improved by more than a single frame when using Vulkan instead of DX11. Cards like the 2070 Super and Vega 56 are technically faster with Vulkan instead of DX11, but you'd really never know that from simply playing the game. Even with AMD's RX 5700 XT, DX11 outperforms Vulkan by almost 10% at this resolution. The caveat once more is that none of the GPUs apart from the 2080 Ti really actually offer a playable experience at this resolution, but we can clearly see the trend of higher performance using Vulkan being flipped on its head at 4K. Lastly, I don't think we even really need to mention the absolutely shambolic results from both the 5500 XT and GTX 1060 when using Vulkan instead of DX11 at this resolution. So that is it for our look at the numbers today, but what sort of conclusions can we draw from this testing? Well, the first thing is, and I think this is perhaps the most obvious conclusion, is that Vulkan can indeed offer significantly improved frame rates over DX11. This was most obvious with cards I have here beside me, AMD's Radeon 7 and also Nvidia's RTX 2080 Ti, but we also saw cards like the 2070 Super, Vega 56 and also the RX 580 offering significantly improved performance with Vulkan instead of DX11, especially at 1080p. That being said, it is by no means an absolute rule that you will get better performance with Vulkan instead of DX11, or at least not in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. One thing that I think becomes really clear across all of our testing is the significant role that video memory capacity actually plays in terms of your experience when using Vulkan. In fairness, Ubisoft did actually point this out from the get-go as they posted the following statement on their website. DirectX 11 drivers have an advantage at handling GPU memory over subscription. When GPU memory over subscription happens with Vulkan, it can trigger stuttering and potentially crashes. To address this, players are advised to keep an eye on the estimated memory consumption displayed on the graphics setting menu and try to reduce the texture quality and or resolution of the game. So yeah, our testing was done using the very high preset 
which at 1080p does actually request over 5 gigabytes of VRAM according to the game itself. However, we did also try an extra GPU run using the 4 GB RX 5500 XT, where we dropped the image quality settings down to medium, which should use just over 3 GB of VRAM, so well within the 4 GB frame buffer of that GPU. Even then, average frame rates using Vulkan instead of DX11 only improved by less than 5%, so not nearly as big a jump as we saw from some other cards in our testing. That really suggests to me that even if you do lower the image quality settings with a 4GB card for instance, you're simply not going to see the same performance increases that we saw from other GPUs that do have a larger memory capacity, as is certainly showcased by the Radeon 7. Finally, the last kind of mini conclusion to draw is about 4K gaming, and if you are a 4K gamer, I think you're just really not going to notice the difference between DX11 or Vulkan. Certainly with cards like the 2080 Ti and Radeon 7 where we know that VRAM is just not going to be an issue, using Vulkan basically made absolutely no difference. I would suggest that this is because at 4K the onus is so much on the GPU before anything else that it really comes down to just how much horsepower you have available instead of changing the API. But it would be interesting to do some further testing on this to see what difference Vulkan versus another API can make at 4K in other games. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have played this game and you have tried switching between DX11 and Vulkan, do let me know what your experience has been down in the comments below. If you'd like to check out our merch as well, you can find a link for that in the description. And while you're there, feel free to head over and join our Discord server, where we'd love to chat with you guys. Lastly, it would be awesome if you guys would consider backing us on Patreon, where you'll get access to a number of exclusive giveaways, and you can also see some of our content early. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic Fulkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.